Hey, what's going on, movie lovers all over the world? You already know it's your boy Testify to the Music, aka Mikey Savage 21, bringing you another movie review. And today we're going to be doing the film Don't Breathe. Stick around after the clip. Yo, I got our ticket out of here. Rumor is this guy is sitting on at least 300k. Boom! That's her guy. Wait, is he blind? We messed up to rob a blind guy, isn't it? Just because he's blind don't mean he's insane, bro. Who's there? Stay right there. How many of you are there? <laughs> just me, man, all right? Just let me go, please. Okay, I swear to God. What do you get when you have a blind military veteran combined with three troublesome teenagers? Well, you have the film, Don't Breathe. Alright, so jumping straight into this review, I gotta say, my experience with the film was not great. Uh, I went and saw it on Friday night, open the night, uh, with a particularly loud and noisy crowd. Uh, I missed bits of dialogue here and there because they were constantly talking and commentating throughout the film. And I got really agitated and kind of ticked me off a little bit. but. I will say that didn't necessarily hurt my experience too bad for the film. Now again, getting straight into the premise, what we have here is a group of young uh, teenagers. They do small time crimes and they eventually get word about this blind military man who lives in the middle of nowhere with no surrounding neighbors um, and he has a quarter of a, uh, possibly a million dollars sitting in his house because his daughter was killed in a car accident and the family tried to buy his silence um, because she wasn't convicted for it. And so he lives all alone. Uh, he has no neighbors or anything. So they think, okay, it's an easy score. So they make it inside the house. And sure enough, they find themselves trying to get back out the house. Now again, I'm going to talk about some positives here. And I'll get into a few positives, not too many. Uh, I'm going to have a spoilers review coming out for you guys. Uh, possibly tomorrow if not Tuesday uh, but just going on some general positive ideas I like the, the setup um, I like the design of the house I like how Fetty Alvarez I like how he makes the house essentially a character you get a broad scope of what's all going on and you just get to see every single nook and cranny of the house the camera shots are perfect here you have camera shots where he essentially takes this long shot and he'll zoom in on the house at certain points and I like how he when he uses the camera work to zoom in on certain parts of the actual house itself you can tell that it's going to be a crucial part uh, of the film, like uh, the crevices inside the wall, the, the, the bathroom window, all sorts of things. If he zooms in on it, he, let's just say there are no wasted shots here, pretty much. No wasted shots whatsoever. Another thing I like, I like the characters. I like how they made me care about them. Now, the character Money, now this is just a minor spoiler, but if you saw seen the trailer, then you pretty much have already seen what the only character I didn't care about was money they didn't really do any backstory on him which I get why because they knew from the get-go he was an expendable character and he was gonna be the first one picked off anyway but then when you get to meet some of the other characters to see their backstory you get the real feel for them and, and Fetty Alvarez does a great job of making you care about these characters I gotta give props up to Jane Levy along with Minette as well they did a fantastic job here and for a film that doesn't have much dialogue through it because again this blind man his senses are so heightened to where they have to essentially keep their hands covered over their mouths they have to tamper their breathing they have to make their dialogue short and straight to the point or they either have to use their phones so you don't have much dialogue going on here but when they have dialogue it is just so great and it is so powerful and it just really moves the plot along and moves the story along as well. Same with Stephen Lang here. Stephen Lang here did a fantastic job playing the blind man. I gotta commend him for what he did on his work here. Uh, again, essentially, he doesn't have much dialogue. He maybe has about maybe 10 to 15 lines of dialogue at the most. And when he delivers his dialogue finally throughout the film, you just buy into it. You buy into this guy that this guy is hurt, that he lost his daughter, 
He's sad, he's still grieving, and you can see why he is so extremely ticked off. And so at one point, it gets to the point where you're rooting for the blind man, but then they do a little bit of a shift at towards the middle, and then you're rooting for the characters, and then they do another little shift, and you're rooting for the blind man. So there's a constant roller coaster emotion here when it comes to who are you rooting for in this film. But ultimately, with the grand scope of things, you get to root for our main protagonist here. Now, another thing I liked about the film, uh, again, I liked how they made the house its own character. Like I mentioned earlier, every single shot was used, every single shot was important. Whenever he zoomed in on something, or whenever he panned the camera to something, it was important. And it was probably going to come back at some point throughout the film, so you need to take note and remember that. So I like how he made essentially the house of the character as well, along with the dog as well. The man has a dog, and I know it's most you know horror films. You know the dog is like a one and done thing where he jumps out and scares you one time, or he jumps out and scares you, and the character shoot and kill the dog. I like here how they fully use the dog throughout the film, and he essentially is his own character as well. Again, Freddy Alvarez, he just has a unique way about him, and I've got to brag on this guy. Now, any of you guys who don't know who Freddy Alvarez is, he essentially is the one who penned the Evil Dead remake, or as John Schnapp likes to call it, the Evil Cabin. Uh, and I actually like the Evil Dead. Uh, I like the original trilogy that they had, but I also like this new interpretation as well. It wasn't as creepy as the original, but it still was able to capture a little bit, if not most of that, flavorful magic as well in that film. So that's who Fatty Alvarez is. So you guys make sure you stay on the lookout for him. A lot of people are saying he could possibly be the next James Wan of the horror franchise. And I can honestly say, watching that film and watching this film and how you just see the progression of him and his directing style since the 2013 remake of The Evil Dead, I gotta commend him again. Fede Alvarez did a fantastic job here. Now as far as negatives go, I really don't have any negatives. There's maybe the ending could be considered a negative because the way it ends up resolving itself. I had a little bit of issue with the way it kind of resolved itself a little bit because it kind of seemed a little forced at the end. But again, that is such a minute thing to where you can just kind of overlook that. So again, my general thoughts on this in film as a whole, I definitely recommend you seeing it. I definitely recommend you go and see it at your local theater. If you get a chance to catch a matinee price, check it out. If you missed a matinee price, then I still say it's worth your money. It is a great film. And what I also like, it's short. It's short and straight to the film. It's short and straight to the point. You have maybe about an hour, hour and a half here. And a lot of times with these horror movies, they drag it on and on and on. And you get to the two hour mark here, like we still haven't resolved this yet. So I like how it's short and straight to the point because as soon as you introduce the characters, we're already rocking and rolling and ready to go. So as far as giving this film a score, hmm, I'm gonna give this a five out of a five. I absolutely cannot really think of a reason why this doesn't deserve a perfect score. Now again, when I do my spoilers review and I watch it again tomorrow with a couple of my buds, I might find some things that I didn't like the second time around and we'll see, but as of right now, my score stands 5 out of a 5. So what did you guys think of Don't Breathe? Have you seen the film yet? Do you plan to check it out? Let me know down in the comment section below. Also, make sure you stay tuned and locked in to this channel because I have more movie reviews coming out throughout this week. Also, before I forget, a little quick short plug. I actually just did a So Gone challenge that was started up by Chance the Rapper a few weeks ago. I finally had a chance to record mine and I got a video hopefully coming along with that as well. But I'll make sure I have a link in the description so where you can go check out my So Gone challenge. I really appreciate some feedback. Thank you again so much for checking out this video. And as I always say, I'm testified to the music. AKA Mikey Savage 21 saying, Peace out.